Hey guys, Jeeps here, and welcome back to Guild Wars 2. So today, we're going to take a look at the crafting system for this game, because it's pretty neat. Now, first of all, we should go down the list of crafting disciplines we have available. And these all require you to go to these various stations. A weaponsmithing station, that's repairs, that's not a station. Leatherworking, tailoring, etc. But yeah, let's go down the list. So, you got Armorsmith, this makes your heavy armor. You got Artificer. This makes foci, staves, scepters, and trident. So kind of your magical weapon creator. We've got chef. This makes food. Yes, this is a regular, normal profession. There aren't minor and major professions, or however you like to look at it. Chef is a fully profession. Chef makes different types of food, which gives you, like, experience boosts and stuff like that. It's pretty nice. And you've got huntsman. This makes your wooden weapons. So harpoon guns, longbows, pistols... Rifles, short bows, torches and horns. I know, pistols and rifles. Big question about whether they're wooden, but again. Mostly this is ranged weaponry. As well as torches and war horns. Then you have jeweler. This makes earrings, necklaces, and rings. So a bunch of your accessory slot stuff. Leather worker. It's what you might think. It's leather armor, so medium armor. Then you've got tailor. Again, this is cloth armor, light armor. And finally, weaponsmith. This makes your metal weapons. So mostly your melee weapons. Your axes, daggers, great swords, hammers, maces, shields, which I guess are kind of a weapon. Swords and spears. So, that gives you the full rundown of what does what. Let's take a look at actually how it works. Because it, Guild Wars 2 handles it in a pretty cool way. It's not quite the same. Now, first off... You probably noticed there weren't any gathering professions in there. These are all crafting professions of some sort. That's because if we go to our hero menu, gathering's handled a little differently. Now, below all my accessories and stuff like that here, you see I have these three items here. A sickle, an axe, and a pick. Pretty much you can equip gathering tools as equipment. There's a slot for each three different types. They are one use only, but you buy them in stacks of 100 or 50 for the... Sickles, which is for the chef items. These let you gather ore, wood, and again, food ingredients. This is kind of cool. There's no gathering professions. Everyone can gather everything. Gathering does give you experience. Not a huge amount, but some. So you can gather everything. And most professions probably do use a bit of both of these. For example, as a weaponsmith, I do need both the wood from copper mine. Sorry, that's a copper mining pick. Wood that I get from chopping down trees, as well as the ore I get from mining. I don't need the food at all, but you can sell it, so you might as well pick these up. You'll get some of these in quest rewards early on, plus you can buy them from the various vendors next to the stations, and just various general supply vendors. Now, there is one other form of gathering, sort of. If we bring up our inventory, I have these things called salvage kits. These let you break down equipment and other things to their base components, which usually gives you copper ore, or leather, or cloth, or whatever that you can then refine other things. Let's do a few examples of this. So I've got these basic salvage kits. They have a 10% chance of giving you the rarer materials, and a 20% chance of recovering any upgrades in the weapon. They're a higher level salvage kit, and this is the second level of salvage kit. Cost a little bit more, but again, you get the chance of the rare materials, so not bad. So... For example, I have this staff here. I have no use for this. It's a white item. It's useless to me. It doesn't sell for much. I can't use it. Let's break that down. Boom. As you can see over here, it gave me three green wooden logs. Very nice. Now, also, I mentioned there are things that aren't equipment that you can break down. This would be things like Tattered Hide is the example here. They're usually listed as trophies. These I can break down. This is how you get leather. Cloth is much the same way. You can break down armor... But you can also break down clothing scraps that you'll get and leather scraps and stuff like that to get more leather. There is no way to skin things. There's no skinning, because obviously there's no skinning profession. And there's no skinning knife item alongside the pick and the axe and stuff like that. So leather can be a bit of a pain to get without equipment because the, you don't get the leather scraps as often as you might think. Now as long as we're here, let's break down a few other things that are useful, useless to me, like this harpoon. Get some more of that goodness. Uh, I can use these things still. I'll break them down later if I need to. Is that pistol worse? Now, nah, well, we're going to keep all that. I could probably break it down. We're going to keep all that stuff for now. Anything else? Anything else? Nope. All right, so that's some good breaking stuff down. So we got some more equipment. Let's go into the weaponsmithing station, and I can show you how this all really works. Now, bring up the F. This brings up the weapon station menu. 
from your hero menu, you can also bring up crafting. However, you can't actually craft anything from this menu. This just shows you what you currently have available, which is nice. You can bring up menu and very, very quickly see what's available. However, you do have to go to one of the associated crafting stations to do anything. Now, as you can see, we have four tabs on the side. The basic one is just production. This is where you can craft stuff. It's very easy to see what you can and can't craft. The colors do indicate how much experience you get from it. If it is in red, you can't craft it yet, but you have learned it. Now, you can buy recipes from karma vendors, but... Most recipes you just learn when you get to high enough level. It does seem you learn them before you can actually make them. For example, the reason I can't make this yet is it needs t three of these tiny claws. You can't use these until you're 25 in that skill. So I can't make any of those yet. However, what other tabs do we have here? So below this, you have the bank tab. This is fantastic. You get direct access to your bank from crafting. You don't need to go to a separate bank. You just do it all from here. Then the third tab, this is the coolest addition to crafting in this game, in my opinion, is collections. This is a separate bank of sorts for crafting materials, as well as a few other things like jewels. Well, no, these are still crafting materials. But mini pets and stuff like that to also get stored here, which is cool, or can be stored here. Pretty much, the way this works is it's a separate bank. If I were to click over, see, Greenwood Logs, that's a crafting material. If I right-click on those, I can go to Deposit Collectible. As you can see, they're now deposited in my collection. This is a separate bank for crafting materials. And as best as I can tell, you can store as many of them as you want in here. You access it from the crafting stations, and you can just withdraw whenever you want. So I actually want these now, so go withdraw collectible. You can also get more of these things from the trading post by clicking on stuff like this, which is not specific to the collectibles menu, but very, very cool that you can just do this straight from the interface. However, I'm not sure if the trading post is currently working. It's kind of been on and off since launch, so we're not even going to bother with that, but we do want these. We'll keep them here. Now, we're going to be using weaponsmithing to demonstrate how crafting actually works. So, as you can see, the first, we got a lot of options here. You got weapons, you got these things called inscriptions, weapons, shields are weapons still, and then you have refinement and components. This is where thing, how this really, really works. So, first of all, you're always going to want to come down to refinement. This is where you turn these raw materials into the actual crafting materials you can use. Now, some MMOs have done things similar to this, just to cite the obvious example. This is, again, coming from my WoW background. For skinning and leatherworking, for example, you could refine... At the base level, you would get leather scraps. This could be turned into light leather. You could then refine the lower-level leathers into the higher-level leathers. And early on, there was also the cured hides. You had to get these hides. They could be refined into more materials like this. That's probably the closest example. They got rid of that, for the most part. But this game has it, and I think it's a cool touch because, frankly, you get experience for this anyway. It's just free experience, the fact that you have to then refine these things. Yes, it takes two to get one, but who cares? So you can do anything with a green wooden log. However, you can do things with green wooden planks. We're going to go ahead and just make all nine of these because the logs are useless. We can't do anything with them except this, with the crafting skills we have. So you can craft as many as you want down here, or you can just hit craft all. And as you'll notice... The more you're crafting, the faster it spins. You get your XP up here, you see what you get on the side. Look at that. Real quick, got that much experience. Very, very slick interface for this. We also can craft one set of bronze ingots, which you get 10, or you get five bronze ingots from 10 copper ore and one lump of tin. Lump of tin is a crafting fuel you buy from the crafting vendors. There are several like this for the different professions, like thread for tailors and Actually, leather workers and stuff like that, and tin, in this case, for weaponsmiths. So we're going to go ahead and craft that one set of bronze ingots. That's very good. Now, down refinement, we can also make green wooden dowels. These are how you make these inscriptions. These are a one-to-one -one thing. You need these to make inscriptions. We'll get to what those do in a second. But we're not going to make these yet. We're going to go up to components. So as you may have guessed, you don't now just use your bronze bars to craft a sword. You actually have to craft the blade and the hilt separately, which is kind of cool. I don't know. This is a bit more in-depth of a crafting system. Again, it's not like it's complicated so much as it is just, I don't know, a little more interesting. So you have to make a sword blade and a sword hilt. We'll go ahead and, we'll go ahead and, should we do a sword? Let's do a sword. Why not? We'll do a sword. So we'll craft one, we'll craft one sword hilt. Boom. We have a sword hilt. That gave us a bunch of experience there. 
And we need a sword blade. We could try a spearhead on a sword hilt, but I don't think that'll work. So we'll do a sword blade. Takes three. Again, nothing complicated here. Really close to leveling up our to level 21 in Weaponsmith. That's pretty exciting. Now, where is sword? Clearly now, we can just make a sword, correct? Well, we kind of can. Now, starting off, we have Mighty Bronze Sword. Simple. This is what you have in crafting precision starting off. You have simple versions of crafting things, which are the blade and the hilt, and then an item which gives it, usually with weapons and armor, I've noticed so far, it's mighty. So you need vials of weak blood, which are the thing that give you the mighty, which is plus power, addendum to your weapon. So we can make one of these. But frankly, it's terrible. It's a level 5 item. It's useless to us at this point. Not like my dagger is actually much better. But <laughs> that's beside the point. Now, how do you make better things than this? This is where the inscriptions come in. Now, I remember mentioning you need these dowels things. Well, we actually have some dowels. We have 23, in fact. So we don't really need to make more right now. We probably will, because we make nine of them. But this is where you can make stuff. So say we want something a little better than the simple one. We need a mighty inscription. Now, the different crafting professions all have different versions of these inscriptions, made with different materials, but the principle is roughly the same each time. You need one of these to craft the better version of a weapon. So let's just say we want a better Mighty Bronze Sword. So what you need is three vials of weak blood and 23 green, or pff, not three, 23, one green wood dowel. We have 23. So let's just go ahead and make one of those, shall we? We'll knock that out. We could also make three resilient green inscriptions, but we can't use tiny scales yet because we're too low level. So we'll go ahead and knock one of these out. Craft. Boom. Level 21. That's exciting. These now will give us as much stuff. But whatever. But you notice we still only have this sword down here. Now, if you've got a keen eye, you've noticed I have got some other weapon types in these other classes that aren't simple. So how do we do that? You may have also noticed I hadn't talked about one of the tabs yet. That would be Discovery. So if we click over to Discovery, we have a list of various different things and four slots. Pretty much, this is how you discover new and more advanced and just different weapons and equipment and stuff. So for example, I could take my a Malign Green Inscription, put it there. I could try putting a Mighty Green Inscription there, and that there's no recipes with that. So we'll take the Malign one out. And we'll keep the Mighty one in. Now, you've probably guessed what we really need to do here. Is put the sword in there. So let's put the sword blade. We'll put the sword hilt. This looks like something. Craft this item to save the recipe. So if we craft one of these, not only do we get the item, we will now permanently have this recipe. As you can probably guess, this gives us the actual mighty bronze sword as opposed to the simple one. So let's go ahead and do that. Giving a bunch of experience. Discovery is great for XP. Great for leveling stuff up. So we've got a mighty bronze sword. It's a level 10 plus 7 power sword. It's not bad. It's not bad. Not spectacular, but it's definitely not bad. That's pretty good for level 10. And there you go. We have created that weapon. How awesome was that? Now, if we go down to sword, boom. There we go. We can make this again. And of course, you would repeat this for... Apparently, you can also get some recipes out of this. This is how you discover recipes. It requires some experimentation. Obviously, you can go online and look up a lot of these. There's plenty of wikis already out there that will have all this information for you. But the aspect of discovery is pretty fun, and it's something this game kind of focuses on already. It's a very exploration and discovery-based game as it is, and I like that the crafting system follows that, as it were. Now, of course, if we really want to, get some of those back. We can either sell... Where, where's that sword? It'll be... Is that it? Mighty Sword? Mighty Bronze Sword. This is it. We could just go ahead and salvage this right back. And recycle it a little bit. Or we could sell it, get 15 copper. It's not much, but extra copper is extra copper. You can never really argue with extra money. Or do whatever. Now, the different crafting systems all work very similarly to this. They're going to have different particulars, obviously. But they're kind of similar. Also, the three, th or not the three, three of the professions do also let you make more bags for your inventory. These would be Tailor, Leatherworker, and Armorsmith, I believe. All of these let you make different types of bags, be they leather bags, cloth bags, or boxes, if you're Armorsmith. They do all have specialty types of bags they can make later on as well. Which automatically, it kind of auto-sorts your inventory by putting the specific stuff that goes in those bags 
more preferably into those bags. So there are equipment boxes and for boxes, which put weapons and armor in there first, and so on and so forth. You get the idea. Very, very cool system. I like it a lot. But yeah, crafting, a lot of fun in this game, a lot of cool takes on it. The collection system is brilliant. This is absolutely fantastic. Brilliant design. Salvaging is a little nitpicky just because it does make getting some materials, specifically I've noticed leather and cloth, a bit of a hassle because you need gear to break down or the, the leather scraps like we saw earlier or cloth scraps and stuff, which don't drop as often as you'd expect. I would have kind of preferred some skinning or, I guess, scavenging option for getting those scrap items. You could still need salvaging, but just make them more common to drop. Something like that. So far, they feel like they just take that little bit longer to actually level. But overall, very cool system. Kind of pretty intuitive. Does some very cool new things without becoming overly complicated. Definitely a cool upside to this game and continues the level of discovery Guild Wars 2 kind of pushes into its gameplay. I like it a lot. It's not perfect, of course, but I like it a lot. So that is going to be it for this video. As always, like, subscribe, share this video with your friends. If you would like to play Guild Wars 2 with me, I am on Fort Aspenwood. My account is at in a shadow point something. Sorry, I don't actually remember. I'm at Narian if you're on this server, however. At na E-R-I-A-N. You should come look me up. I'm a friendly guy. I'll say hi at the very least. Hey, you might even be in the background of one of these videos. Who knows? So that's it for now, my friends. As always, I've been Jeeps. And I will talk to you guys later.